Today in this video, we are just going to continue how to write context-free grammar for the given language. Already in my previous video, I have solved some examples and I also explained what is context-free grammar. So let us continue with some more examples here. This is the first example. The language given here is a power i, b power j, but there is a condition i is equal to j plus 1. So what is a string pattern? Sequence of a followed by sequence of b i number of a must be followed by j number of b's. But what is the value given for i? It is said that uh, the count of a must be 1 greater than the count of b's. So how to write a grammar for this? Let us see this pattern a, a, b. In this pattern there is one a terminal a and there is one terminal b and uh, normally we know that all the variables are written in caps and every variable is recursive recursive in the sense in place of a we can replace whatever is there on the right hand side of the production rule so a a b in place of a suppose if i have the rule a derives a a b in place of a once again i can replace a a b b b Again, if I try to do the same thing, I will be obtaining the string pattern like this. It means every time when I introduce A in my string, I am able to introduce B also. In the sense, equal number of A and equal number of Bs. Okay, this pattern, how it helps to derive the grammar for this language, we are going to write grammar like this. S yes, derives A A. S yes is a variable which is also the start symbol. The start symbol defines a pattern of this language A A. Already one terminal A is there. So what this variable A should do? This variable A should produce equal number of A's and B's. Finally at one point this A must be replaced by epsilon. So let me show the derivation here. Yes can be replaced by a a and this a can be replaced by a a b further if you want this a can be replaced by a a b at one point this a must be replaced by epsilon so what is the string we may be obtaining one extra a then we will be obtaining equal number of a's and equal number of b's so there is j number of b's and there is i number of a's where i is equal to j plus 1. So this is a grammar for the given language. Right. Now let us look into the second question. The second question there is a regular expression given. For this regular expression we have to write the context free grammar. According to Chomsky hierarchy all the regular languages are the subset of context free languages. So, for every regular expression, we are able to write context-free grammar also. So, what is a regular expression? 0, 1, 1 plus 1, the whole star, dot, are concatenated by 0, 1, the whole star. This plus is nothing but the union operator. This regular expression is of the form A union B, the whole star, followed by A star. Just I am giving an example. This regular expression you can compare with this pattern. A union B the whole star followed by A star. In this case A is 0, 1, 1. B is 1. For the other part of the regular expression it is A. Or else I can comfortably change it by some other terminal. Let it be C star. Already we have seen how to write context free grammar for the regular expression A union B whole star in my previous video. For this, how can I write the context-free grammar? S derives A, S, R, B, S, R, Epsilon. This is the grammar for this regular expression. This grammar produces strings of A's and B's of any length. So the same technique only we are going to use here. So I have a start symbol which defines the complete pattern of this regular expression. So what is the pattern? The pattern is A dot B. A is nothing but 
this first half of the regular expression b is nothing but 0 1 whole star so i have to define a what is a the variable a is nothing but of the form a union b the whole star so i have to write my production rule in this format a is terminal a is 0 1 1 in place of yes i am going to have this a terminal b is in this case it is 1 just compare this with a and this with b a union b the whole star in place of a we are going to have 0 1 1 in place of b we are going to have 1 of course here we used the variable s yes. in this case we are using the variable a that is the only difference so 0 1 1 a 1 b finally this a is replaced by epsilon this production rule is equivalent to this production rule except that a is 0 1 1 b is 1 here we defined this a union b whole star with the variable of s but here 0 1 1 plus 1 whole star is defined with the help of variable a right now let us define what is b b is nothing but it should produce 0 or more number of times 0 1 the whole star so how do we do that 0 1 b finally this b can be replaced by epsilon let us try to understand individually the rules also let us consider only this rule what this rule does b in place of b i can replace it by 0 1 b again in place of b i can replace it by 0 1 b likewise i can do any number of times 0 1 0 1 0 1 b at one point i should terminate the growth of my string to do that i am replacing this b by epsilon so finally what is the string i obtained 0 1 0 1 0 1 i can write it like 0 1 whole to the power of 3 so to obtain 0 1 whole to the power of star this is the rule and what this rule does i already explained it produces 0 1 1 union 1 the whole star so put a dot b put together it generates this pattern okay now let us move on to the third example this is the example the given language is a power n b power m a power 2n such that m and n is greater than or equal to 0 so what is the pattern initially n number of a's followed by m number of b's and once again sequence of a's are there but is but it is twice the count of this a's so we have to generate this pattern how do we generate this pattern okay let me write a grammar like this yes as usual defines the start symbol of the grammar this s derives a yes a a what this pattern does this pattern does a s a a in place of yes we can write it once again in place of yes i can use the same production rule a s a a a a in place of s once again i can apply the same rule a s a a and the rest of the a's i am writing as it is so what is happening here before this is if i introduce one a after this is there are two a's produced so here we have n number of a's right after yes we have two n number of a's so this pattern produces a power n and a power 2n so between a power n and a power 2n we should produce m number of b's so what do we do at one point we are replacing this s by a variable a you can use any variable starting from a to z you can use any letter but only thing you have to use write it in uppercase capital letter so now we know what is this a has to do this a has to produce any number of b's b a r epsilon so how come now let us just observe only this rule how it is producing any number of b's a 
can be replaced by BA or it can be replaced by Epsilon also. Now this A can be replaced by once again BA. This A we can take a chance to replace it by BA. Likewise it produces any length of base. At one point where you want to stop the growth of the string, you can replace this A by Epsilon. So this rule produces M number of B's. This rule alone produces N number of A's. And on the right hand side it produces 2N number of A's. In between this N number of A's and 2N number of A's, we are introducing this M number of B's. That is why at one point this S is replaced by A. So this is the answer for this language. Okay, now let us look into the fourth question. Statement is given. For this language, we have to write the context free grammar. What is the statement given? All non-empty strings that start and end with the same symbol. And uh, sigma or the alphabet what is given here is also A comma B. Strings of A's and B's that should start with, start as well as end with the same symbol. It means if a string starts with A, it should end with A. If a string starts with B, it should end with B. Now the question is what can we have in between? We can have any length of A's and B's. So any length of A's and B's we can write like this in regular expression form. A union B whole star. In this case also in between the first B and the last B we can have any length of A's and B's. So this is what the language describes. We have to write the context free grammar for this. S yes is the start symbol. It defines two patterns. If it begins with A, it is ending with A. In between we can have any length of A's and B's. R, the same start symbol, defines another pattern also. It begins with B and ends with B. In between we can have any length of A's. So what is this A? This A must produce uh, the production rule. A must have the production rule which generates the regular expression A union B whole star. Already we discussed any number of times. N number of times we discussed what it has to do. This A is nothing but A A R B A R epsilon. So this rule generates A union B whole star. The start symbol S defines the entire pattern of the string. It begins with A, ends with A. In between we can have any length of A's and B's. Or it begins with B, ends with B. In between we can have any length of A's and B's. So this is the context free grammar for the given language. Okay, now let us see another example. Here language is given, language is equal to WWR such that W belongs to A comma B whole star. W is made up of the alphabet A and B. WR is nothing but the reverse of W. Okay, let us take some strings. Suppose W is A, B, B. WR is what? B, B, A. This is W. This is WR. This is one example. Let us take another example. If W is B A B, W R is also B A B. So this is another example. This is W, this is W R. Let us take one more example. If W is B B A, W R is A B B. So this is W, this is W R. So I have taken three examples. How do we write grammar for this? So we should find some a common sequence or a pattern among the strings. If we cleanly observe, keenly observe, the first character and the last character is the same. The second character and the last but two is the same. The third character and last but three is the same. In every string it repeats. The first and the last is the same. The second and last but two is the same. The third and last but three is the same. Even in this case also the same thing. So we are just going to make use of this pattern to write the grammar. So yes. If A is introduced in your string, of course another A also should be introduced. 
if b is introduced in the string another b must be introduced on the right hand side of the string finally this s can be replaced by epsilon so this is a grammar for the given language so let me derive the same strings from this grammar yes is the start symbol which begins the derivation of the string now i'm going to derive the string a b b b b a so first character is a so obviously i have to choose this rule a yes a now this is a recursive variable in place of yes what could we replace now now the second character is b we have to obtain b so obviously we have to choose this rule a b s b a now in place of yes what is the option existing now b s b a b b s b a now finally sorry i missed one b here b right finally this s must be replaced by epsilon if it is replaced by epsilon the string what we are obtaining is a b b b b a similarly you people can try for the strings also b a b b a b b b a a b b this is nothing but the language of even palindromes this is a context free grammar which produces the strings of even palindromes the logic is very simple when you introduce a on the left hand side of the string we should equally introduce another a on the right hand side if b is introduced on the left hand side of the string a b must be introduced on the right hand side finally to terminate the growth of the string we have to use epsilon so okay now uh, another example we are going to see this is a given language the language is going like this a power n b power m c power k n number of a's followed by m number of b's followed by k number of c's and there is a condition given n plus 2m is equal to k so how do we write the grammar for this a power n b power m in place of k i replace it by n plus 2m right so let me expand this further a power n b power m c power n c power 2m if i replace this if i exchange this it doesn't make much difference a power n b power m c power 2m c power n it is nothing but 2m plus n or n plus 2m is one and the same right now this is a pattern we are obtaining if we observe here number of a is equal to number of c's here number of b's if it is m number of c is twice the number of b's so there is a relation between these two terminals and there is a relation between these two terminals also so how do we write the grammar the grammar is very simple yes is the start symbol from where we begin the derivation of the string s derives a c in the sense whenever a is introduced in your string c also must be introduced because number of a is equal to number of c's in between i am using a variable a so what is the purpose of this a this a must produce this pattern b power m and c power 2m so let us write what is a this a is nothing but it produces b in your string whenever a b is produced in your string it equally produces 2c also to facilitate that of course we have a a here at one point this a can be replaced by epsilon which terminates the growth of the string now just let me give a picturization of this s is the start symbol this s can be replaced by a a c but suppose i want to introduce more number of a now it produces only one a and one c right i want to now immediately it is asking us to replace this a by b a c c but i may have two a's and two c's or i may have three a and three c or i may have four a and four c's to facilitate that i have to use the same variable name here a s c at one point this s must be replaced by a right so now i replace this a by s yes. 
Now, since I have used the same variable name, this S can be once again replaced by AASCC. This S can be once again replaced by AA, ASC. Already two Cs are there that I am using. So, what this rule does, it produces equal number of A and equal number of Cs. At one point, this S can be replaced by A. We know what this A does. This A produces 1B on the left hand side. Equally, it produces 2C on the uh, sorry, 1B on the left hand side, equally on the right hand side, it produces 2Cs. So, finally, we are able to obtain this pattern. Equal number of A and equal number of Cs. In between, we are able to obtain this B power M and C power 2M. So, the grammar is this. S derives ASC. At one point, this S is replaced by A. This A produces BACC. Finally, this A can be replaced by Epsilon. This is the grammar for the given language. One last question of this video. I have already given a grammar. What this grammar generates? What are the strings generated by this grammar? Yes derives. I have four options in place of yes. If I replace it by epsilon, yes just produces epsilon. It means my language contains only epsilon. Right. This is one option. Okay. Next option. Yes derives A S B. I'll choose this. In place of yes, let me go with the same option A S B B. In place of yes, if let me go with the same option once again. Now you would have identified what is the pattern being generated by this rule. It is generating equal number of A followed by equal number of Bs. Right. So, this grammar generates equal number of A followed by N number of Bs. The same number of Bs. Similarly, if I opt this rule BSA, we can easily guess that S derives BSA in place of S. I could replace B, B, S, A, A. In place of S, once again, I could replace the same option. It means it produces B power N, A power N. Number of B is equal to the count of A's. Right. These patterns are possible from this grammar. There is another pattern also possible. S derives A, S, B. In place of S, I could replace B, S, A. In place of S, once again, I could replace B, S, A. At one point, I could replace S by Epsilon. If I replace, this is the string I am getting. What is the pattern I am finding? I am not finding any uh, uh, pattern, but I could say that count of A is equal to count of Bs. Similarly, let me try with other option. S derives... Yes, yes. In place of yes, I can have A, S, B. Let me retain this yes as it is as of now. Now in place of yes, I can have B, S, A. Already A, S, B is there. In place of yes, I am having B, S, A. I am retaining this yes also. Now this yes, I am replacing it by epsilon. So I am obtaining A, B, A, B. Now in place of yes, if I could replace it by B, S, A. Then this S is replaced by epsilon at one point. So what is the string I am getting? A, B, A, B, B, A. In this case also the count of A is equal to count of Bs. You can try more strings like this. If you try more strings like this, finally the language generated by this grammar is. I can write the language here. Number of A in a string is equal to number of B's in the string. This is the language generated by this grammar. And one more point, what do we need to remember here is A power N, B power N. Here also the number of A is equal to number of B. B power N, A power N. Here also the count of B is equal to count of A. And these two patterns are the subset of this language. So this grammar generates the strings of A's and B's 
where the number of A is equal to number of Bs. I hope with these examples now uh, all my viewers have got an idea about what is context-free grammar and how to write in context-free grammar. For better understanding, please look into the previous videos like Chomsky Hierarchy as well as Context-Free Grammar Part 1 also. Thank you all.